Our first speaker is Dr. Ginny Bender. And we have a team of dentists here, and I think you've, you've met uh, Dr. Manalili and you've met Dr. Chi, and Dr. Manalili will be speaking this afternoon. So this is the newest member of our team, and she joined us last year, right, Dr. Bender? Okay. Uh, she's a graduate of Tufts, and she practiced in private practice for 27 years, and then we were able to cajole her into joining us here at Glidewell. She's been a wonderful addition to the team. We love working with her. She's a, just a, a fantastic doctor. So, so great to have her. And she's gonna talk to you today about zirconia and lithium silicate crowns and how to do all that finishing, polishing, and cementing. And she's really got this broken down to be crystal clear. So Dr. Bender, please join us up here and welcome. Thank you, Dr. Park. What an incredible morning that we had today with Dr. Swanson and the fundamentals of aesthetics, Dr. Duplantis and all of his great tips on tooth preparations for aesthetic design, and Dr. Barrett with his smile makeovers and how to communicate with the patient and the laboratories. And then Dr. Chi with uh, learning how to use all the great aesthetic options, uh, restorative options for transforming smiles. So on the heels of Dr. Chi, uh, there are two crown products that are the most popular, which are the zirconia and lithium silicate crowns. Zirconia, known for its unsurpassed beauty and strength, a great alternative to gold alloy or PFM crowns. And then we have the lithium silicate crowns, which are known for their extreme beauty. They're also known as Emacs and we call obsidian here at Glidewell. So having said that, we'll, we're gonna talk about the latest pro uh, protocols for finishing, polishing, and cementing. One day during one of my lunch breaks here at Glidewell, uh, my coworker, whom I didn't recognize, she came up to me and she said, are you Dr. Bender? I know you. You were my dentist when I was a child. <laughs> this was a real surprise for me. Um, I didn't recognize her because she's an adult now. And it must have been maybe 14 years ago that she was my patient. I didn't remember her name, but when she smiled at me, I remembered her peg lateral number 10. <laughs> she had gone through orthodontics, and they were not able to close the space, and she said that it really bothered, bothered her, and her self-confidence uh, with her smile didn't match her inner happiness. So I decided to become her dentist again, and we decided to enhance her smile by working on number 10. This is Justine. She represents every patient who wants to have her smile match her inner happiness. And whether we do a zirconia crown or a lithium silicate crown, we want to do our best for them, something that's gonna be beautiful, long lasting. So, we're gonna go over the protocols in delivery day. Cementation, a very popular topic among all of us. So when we get the crown back from the laboratory, this is for tooth number 10, we're gonna do three things. We're gonna check the fit, the contacts, and the occlusion. So right away, intraorally, you want to place the, the crown onto the tooth and make sure that it's seating all the way down. If it's not, we're gonna have to adjust. And uh, one of my favorite prosthodontists gave me a little tip not too long ago in using articulating paper adjacent to the restoration to the neighboring tooth to determine where it might be binding if it's not sitting all the way down. The last thing we wanna do is we want to, if we have to adjust, adjust blindly the interproximals and lose that contact. That is not a good day. Next thing I do is 
once the crown is seated, I seat the patient up and I have them look at the restoration, especially if it's a front tooth. You want to make sure that that's the color that they like. Make sure the shape is good. Then you check the occlusion. Some of the tools that I like to use are in this little kit right here that's in red. It says Bruxer. There are lots of other kit, kits out there in the market. I like this because it has all of my favorites. The, the, the fine diamond burrs are in the front row for the gross adjustments, and then in the back row are the finishing cups and then the polishing wheels in the middle. So when I have to adjust, I like to use the long tapered diamond burr at slow speed, 10,000 to 15,000 RPM, light touch, and just adjust those spots that are binding. And then I like to use the, the football diamond burr for the occlusal adjustments once it's seated down when we're checking the occlusion. Once I feel like it's sitting all the way down, I go ahead and take a bite wing x-ray and see, is it sitting to the margin? Is my restoration sitting to the margin? And with this particular tooth number 14, I see that it could sit a little bit better. So I'm gonna go back to the drawing board and check with floss, see that if it's tight, just go ahead and, and readjust that and feel good about it. Once I feel good, and know that it's sitting all the way down, then I go and do the more refined finishing of the restoration. The reason why we adjust is because we wanna get rid of those rough surfaces. We wanna go from rough to smooth because rough areas attract bacteria and it also can be abrasive to opposing natural teeth. So the smoother, the better in quality of our dentistry. So the green cup in our kit is coarse, and then medium, and then fine. They're diamonds infused into the rubber cups, so we're going to get a nice finish. And then I like to use the polishing wheels. The, the brown has also diamond infused into it, and that, this is what's going to give you that nice shine. And then the, uh, the blue wheel, it'll make it pretty pearly looking, so I don't use it too often. So I, but I do like to use these, um, the, these wheels to get that nice smooth surface. And this is how it looks at close up. So I'm gonna give you a little pearl. Um, how, many of you, how many of you had had to cut off a zirconia crown? You know that it's not fun. It can take a long time. And when I first dealt with this issue where I had to cut off a crown, I thought, oh, the coarser the burr, diamond burr, the better. But the reality is, the finer the diamond, with lots of water, it's gonna cut through like butter. So this is a little pearl I hope that you might be able to take home with you today. Try it and see how you like it, if you ever have to uh, adjust or remove a, a zirconia crown. So we have our crown sitting down. We're happy about it. Now we have to think about the cement that we're going to choose. Cements are a little confusing. There's so many different types of cements out there. Let's break it, let's break it down into three qualities, or three categories. The conventional cements, the self-adhesive, and the adhesive. These are just examples of some of the cements that I like to use. There are many, many more out there, but Basically, the conventional are the RMGIs, the resin modified glass ionomers. These are really easy to use. Less steps, they're very moisture tolerant. So if you're delivering a crown in an area that, that it's like a wisdom tooth and you just can't control the saliva even when you pack cord, this might be the better cement to use. But you also have to be careful. The, the tooth has to have a certain height to it. And we'll go over that. So the conventional is the RMGIs, and then we're gonna to go to the adhesive category. These are reserved for the highest bond strength. Let's say you prep a tooth and it doesn't really have the height that you, that you wanted. Uh, there's not much tooth structure there. Then you wanna rely on maybe a more chemical bond to make sure that your crown's gonna last. And then in the middle, we have the self-adhesive cements. This is when you're just like, mm, should I, shouldn't I? These are great when 
you still want to have a uh, easy protocol. You don't have to acid, acid etch the tooth. This is self etch. Uh, you can go ahead and use the, the self adhesives. Now, how do we determine preparation retention? So this is a digital impression that I took of my patient, Lily. Tooth number 19 on the far right and number 20 on the left. You can determine the, the height from the gingival margin to the occlusal table clinically actually using a perioprobe. You can just see, is it three millimeters or more, or is it less? So the, the magic number is three. Anything that is more than three millimeters is considered retentive, meaning that the ability for the crown to tip and fall off of the tooth uh, is, it's gonna be much harder for that to happen. So tooth number 20, I actually measured it in our, what we call fast design. Uh, we have a system that we can mill out our crowns and you can see your preparations like this and make these measurements. And I measured 4.13 for the premolar. So this, was, this tooth is retentive. But I also want to point out, if you find that your preparation starts looking a little TP-esque and starts not looking so parallel, then you might want to consider that maybe you might want to use a retentive, more retentive cement. So you want, you want to have walls that are relatively parallel, maybe angled at six millimeters. I'm, I'm not going to measure it with a protractor, but you'll, you'll know that it's a nice tall preparation. Now when I look at number 19, I can see that this is a much shorter preparation. I meant to try to keep the height, but you know, as we prep and we want to make the space enough for the, the restorative material to be able to um, cover that tooth properly, we end up with a short prep. So that molar situation I would be thinking about an adhesive bonded cement. So let's talk about zirconia, or what we call here at Glidewell, Bruxer crown. Uh, there's two kinds, the Bruxer full strength and the, the Bruxer aesthetic. Determining retention, you've, you've discovered that your, your crown is retentive, the preparation is retentive, then you're just gonna cement with the RMGI. So we're gonna just try to simplify things, cement with the RMGI. A non-retentive preparation, you're going to bond the cement to that tooth. The tooth is short, you're just not sure that it, you know, a regular conventional cement's gonna cut it. You want to make sure to use the, the strongest bond. So first we're gonna talk about the retentive preparation. What do we do here? So you get your case back from the laboratory and Zirconia crown relies on a little bit of the micro-mechanical uh, surface of the inside of the crown, what we call the intaglio surface. It does need to be air braided. Most labs, it may, they may or may not be air braiding it for you. You need to check with your lab. Glidewell always does it for you. So make sure that your crown has been air braided. And then next, after I've tried the crown on the tooth, you want to clean the insi inside of the crown. You can use an alcohol uh, cotton pellet. There are some cleaning agents out on the market, which I'll show you later. And rinse and dry and make sure whatever you, when, when you try it on the crown, whether saliva, blood, or try and paste, or any temporary cement is on there, you want to get rid of that. You don't want that to interfere. Here's your prep. Is it retentive? Is it non-retentive? You can measure it. it. This is a retentive prep. So we're gonna go ahead and use a regular cement. I like to make sure that any temporary cement is off of that tooth. A lot of these temporary cements are very clear and it's hard to see. And I find that just removing it with my Explorer is not enough. There's always like crumbs around it. So I like to use a pumice slurry to remove any uh, temporary cement behind, and then so you want to clean and rinse and dry. Next, you want to make sure you do not desiccate the tooth. Do not over dry the tooth because the tooth has these tubules that are exposed. We can't see the tubules, but you want to be very careful. 
even when you air dry the tooth, the tubules are exposed, and this is an opportunity for us to desensitize the tooth. I like to use uh, either G5 or Gluma. There are other desensitizing uh, materials out there. What it basically has, Gluma, it has a, uh, a couple of special ingredients, glutaraldehyde with heme, to plug up those little holes that are exposed after you've cut the prep or you've, you've uh, acid etched the tooth. Or in the, so basically, you want to close those holes to decrease the sensitivity. And the way you use this is you just want to gently place it onto the, the preparation. You don't want to get it on the soft tissue. It is very caustic. And you let it dry. You can aspirate a little bit of it. Let it dry for 30 to 60 seconds. And then I do it again. Make sure that everything is nice and plugged up. OK, and here we are with the conventional cement RMGI. We call it the cement squish. You like to see a little bit come out on the edges. And RMGI is very easy to work with. It does look a little white, so you may or may not want to use it in the anterior. You can use the self-adhesive if you don't like that white quality. There is about 20% resin in this material that allows you to tack cure it. And it's a nice thing because it does take some time for the RMGI to set. I find five minutes waiting for it to set is a long time for me. So you want to just tack cure it and then touch it with your Explorer, and it's just going to come out in one piece. OK, just to recap, for Bruxer or Zirconia, you've got your restoration. Air abrasion is very important. Check with your lab. Glidewell always does it. You've tried in your crown. You clean. You can use alcohol, ultrasonic. Air abrade it again if you want to. That's a great way of cleaning the crown. And then you go and use RMGI or self-adhesive resin. And I should mention that RMGI does contain fluoride. And it is protective of the margin. So if you want to use, if your patient it has a tendency to have cavities every recall. This is a great cement to be thinking about. And then for the tooth, I like to do a pumice slurry, clean that tooth, rinse and dry, leave the dentin moist, and then use this opportunity to desensitize. Let's think about the non-retentive preparation. We are going to be thinking about bonding adhesive cementation. So again, the zirconia does need to be abraded. Check with the lab. Glide will always, always does it. This situation is really interesting. And I'm thinking most of us have seen it, where the patient comes to the office crown in hand. You just cemented it less than a year ago. The crown has no cement inside. It's clean as a whistle. But you look at the, the tooth, the preparation, that cement is perfectly sealed on top of the prep. What happened here? Is this a cement failure? Or is it a protocol failure? The failure is that we didn't decontaminate the tooth. When we're bonding cement onto the zirconia, it's imperative that the zirconia crown inside is decontaminated. What are some of the things that we're going to be using to make sure that it's decontaminated? You can air braid again, water, rinse, and dry. There's a product called IvoClean. It's a 20-second scrub, water, rinse, and dry. You actually want to physically scrub the phospholipids that are the contaminants that are creating. It's inhibiting the bonding of the zirconia crown to the cement. Physical removal. Zirclean is another one. You can use bleach. Studies show that you can use bleach. The only problem with that is when you clean it, you might want to spray it, and then it's going to get all over your clothes or your patient's clothes. And I, it, I've had something like that happen. So you want to be a little careful with that. So this is just a picture of what I do. You, you put this the Iva Clean all the way to the top, and you're going to scrub it with a clean micro brush to make sure that you're getting rid of those phospholipids. Decontamination. 
This is probably one of the most important steps. Next important, you want to use a primer called MDP. This needs to be placed onto the zirconia crown inside surface, intaglio surface, in order to create the coupling or the marriage of the adhesive MDP to the cement. Here are some of the products that are out there. Some are a little bit high maintenance and some are easy to use. It, it's really a, probably a, a personal preference for you. MDP is the, is the critical ingredient that you want to be looking for when you cement zirconia crowns with a bonded protocol. Clearfill has it, um, but you do need to refrigerate it. I find that that's a little high maintenance. That means I got to have somebody go and get it from the, the fridge during the treatment. Um, 3M Universal has both MDP and silane. Silane is important when uh, we cement other types of crowns like lithium, but I, I don't want to go there just yet. But MDP in uh, 3M, that's a great product. And then we have uh, Monobond Plus. So that's the ingredient that you're going to be looking for. For the tooth portion, we are thinking just like we're doing a composite. You're going to use acid etch, and I do full etch. You can do just enamel etch, but I like to do the full etch. You want to be careful not to get it on the adjacent tooth like I did. You might see a little blue on tooth number nine. You want to avoid that because when you're cementing with these resin cements, it can cause the cement to bond to the adjacent tooth. So. Next, take the opportunity to desensitize the tooth. You want to close up those dentinal tubules. And then we have the adhesive. This is the 3M Scotch Bond. And you want to scrub it in 20 seconds real well into the dentin of that preparation. Make sure that you've got the marriage of the adhesive into the tubules. Okay, that's what's going to create that retention. And then we've got the cement squish, the bonding with the resin adhesive. It's important when you use adhesives, try to use the same material from the same company. They're, they are, these manufacturers do formulate their products to work with the, their own products really well. If you mix and match, they don't guarantee that their product is going to work as well. So I would highly recommend to just try to keep same materials. So let's go over the bonding of zirconia. You got your restoration, air braid, check with the lab. Glide will always does it. Try it in. Decontaminate. Very important. Air braid, Ivo clean, sodium hypochlorite. Then we have the MDP primer. That's going to create that marriage of uh, the, the resin cement to the crown. Tooth portion, we're thinking bonding protocol for a composite. Etch the tooth, rinse and dry, desensitize, bonding agent. Now we're going into the lithium silicate crowns. These are a great, beautiful cosmetic option, but it is a different material from zirconia. So you want to make sure that you're following the right protocol for this material. Lithium silicate, also known as Emax or obsidian. Whether your preparation is retentive or non-retentive, you will always be thinking of bonding your lithium silicate crown to the tooth. Lithium silicate is not as strong. It's about 400 megapascals. You want to be bonding to the tooth. To prepare the inside surface of the crown, a hydrofluoric acid is recommended. Now, you have to be careful, though. Your lab may have already done this procedure for you. If you don't know, call the lab. You don't want to etch the inside more than once. Etching the glass can create a weakness if you overdo it. So you really want to be careful. Glide will always etches it for you, so you don't have to worry. But I don't know, like some labs do it, some labs don't. Just make sure. 
Then we use a silane coupler to marriage the crown to the cement. So this is important, silane. We talked about some of the primers and monobond contains silane. There were other products there. The 3M, they do contain the silane so you can multi-use these products. So back to the tooth. We're etching the tooth, full etch, desensitize, take that opportunity. Then we scrub the adhesive for at least 20 seconds and then air thin, real thin, and light cure. Tooth is ready for the crown. With the, with the adhesive cements, you, you're gonna have a couple of options. You have the dual cure, which means that it will set on its own based on the manufacturer. It'll tell you how much time you have, or you can do a light cure. And why that's important is if you're doing multiple deliveries, you, you don't want to race for time in, in trying to make sure that it's, you know, you're, you're going to get it to sit down and set. You're going to be able to use a light cure cement that's going to give you a lot of working time. So if you're doing veneers on the anterior, this is a great cement to use. And this is what I used for tooth number 10. I spot cured using a, a, a light cure adhesive cement, and then I cleaned away the excess. I don't want the cement to get caught up in between the interproximals of the teeth because the cleanup is, it's not my favorite. <laughs> then I get the floss in there, in there to make sure that we can clean it up as much as possible before we do the final light cure. Okay, so let's go over the bonding lithium silicate. We call it obsidian here at Glidewell and the restoration. You're gonna use a hydrofluoric acid to etch the inside, but again, caution, I'm gonna caution you that the lab may have done it already. Try not to do it twice. Check, go ahead and try it in, rinse and dry. Uh, you can use those cleaning products here again if you want, I have a clean, but you want to make sure you silenate it. And then the, the tooth portion, you're just, just like the bonding protocol for composites. Etch, rinse and dry, moist dentin, desensitizer, bonding agent. So let's just, just recap here. Finishing and polishing is relatively easy. The protocol hasn't changed that much in like 20, 30 years. You want to go from coarse to fine so that it's kind to the neighboring teeth and opposing teeth. Picking the right cement can be hard. But if you categorize it and think about it like this, it can be easy. Zirconia, if it's retentive, more than three millimeters, you're going to use an RMGI, resin modified glass ionomer. Make it easy on yourself. You can use a self-adhesive if you want to, if it's an anterior, that's okay. Non-retentive, three or less, you're gonna be going into the adhesive bonding protocol. You don't have that much tooth structure there, you want to have that extra security. Lithium silicate glass ceramics, you always want to bond that restoration. Okay, so hopefully that will simplify things for you. So this is my patient, Justine, you saw earlier in my presentation. This is how her peg lateral looked. Even after orthodontics, she was very unhappy with her. She called it her baby smile. She's almost 30 and she wanted to have a more mature smile. So what I did for her was I did a single obsidian crown on number 10 and I did some selective enamelplasty and selective bonding. And this is how she looks today. This is Justine. So I hope I was able to give you good information about 
the new protocols for, for bonding and uh, cementing and finishing and polishing. I, I'm, thank you so much for your time. <laughs>